This lesson is for the Beyond Two Souls version of Lost Cause, played by Elliot Page. I made a version of this myself, you can find it in the description or in the end screen of this video. I use a capo on the 6th fret. Elliot doesn't use a capo, but a capo will help you if you can't sing it in the same key, or if you have a guitar that's not particularly forgiving and you don't want to struggle to press down bar chords as you sing, because the capo lowers your action and it makes it easier to grip your chords. Okay, so I know that most of you don't need the level of detail that I'm about to go into, so I'm just going to give you a nice slow performance with a metronome at 80 beats per minute. I'll go for the whole song. Pardon the vocals, I don't usually sing this so low. I put a capo on the 6th fret, like I said earlier, so let's see what we have here. We're starting with the C6 slash 11, yeah. Let's start with the chord shapes. First we have a C6 slash 11, which sounds difficult but is not that hard at all. We have the third finger on the third fret of A, fourth finger on the third fret of D, second finger on the second fret of G, and first finger on the first fret of B. At the top we have the thumb, we're muting, because that would be an E note, and this is a C chord. And um, the E string at the bottom is open. Then we have a C major, an A minor, an E major, a G major, and an F, which we will play in full bar shape. You can play a simple F like that, just like that first chord we just learned. Uh, if you mute the E string by flattening down by uh, flattening down your first finger, you will have an F chord instead of C6 slash 11. If you're not familiar with any of the chords, pause the lesson, memorize them, um, and now let's check out the strumming pattern. So the strumming pattern is really simple. You can probably already play it. It's one of the most common patterns we have. It's one, two, and, and four, and. Down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, and, and four, and one. here is to keep your right hand moving so that you strum the right direction. Um, 
If you're not very technical, I would suggest that you slow this video down and pay attention to what direction I'm strumming every time. And um, try to try to link that to the numbers rather than just think of it as down, down, up, up, down, up. Now, if you really want to be good at this and keep your tempo steady, you have to practice it with a metronome. The tempo in Elliot's version is 103 beats. My version is 94, I believe. Um, let's do 103. And this is actually a very good way for you to practice the song when you're starting out. You can start at a very slow tempo and just speed up say about five beats at a time until uh, you can play it at full speed. So this is 103. Let's hear this uh, strumming pattern at 103. Okay, so let's start memorizing the chords, the chord progressions in the song, so that we actually have something to practice, right? Not just a strumming pattern. So, in the intro, we have one bar of C6 slash 11 and one of C played twice. We play these same chords three more times. Then we have one bar of A minor and one bar of E. As simple as that. The changes are always on the first beat. The second verse is the exact same. Then we have the chorus. So in the chorus we have this F chord, right? I'm gonna play it as a full bar. You can play it um, like this if you'd like with the E string muted at the bottom by the first finger and the other E muted at the top by the thumb so we have uh, something very similar to the first just one bar of F then one bar of G C that's played twice kind of acts as a little intermission before the outro when we have one of F, one bar I mean, uh, of F and one of G played three times just like the chorus and then the song ends on a single strum of C. So it's just one, two, and two bars plus that one last strum. And the reason why it ends on that C is because the song is in the key of C um, and so um, that chord resolves the progression. It sounds like an ending. Now if you're using a capo you can't quite say that anymore uh, because you've changed the key so the song is in whatever key uh, you've put it I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah. Now, let's move on to the vocal. So if you're struggling to play it and sing it at the same time and uh, it's not that it's too low or too high for you, I uh, don't see how it could be too low, but anyway, <laughs> it's pretty high. So um, if you're struggling to play it and sing it at the same time, so if you're struggling with the rhythm, let's talk about the rhythm of the vocals. So. We're not going to go into details too much, we're not going to see where, well actually we are going to see where each syllable goes, but uh, first let's talk about where each line starts and where 
the last word goes in each line because I think those are most significant in this song. So here we go. So in the verse, almost every line will start on the third beat of the C6 slash 11 bar. And the last word of that same um, line will be on the end um, right after four. So we'll have something like this. Did you catch it? That's where it goes. That's where the my goes on the end after two. That is one, two, my. is on the end after four. Right before the C, just as you're changing chords, that's when you say that word. Now in the second line, cut goes on the third beat, so So you can see that I'm saying the word cut while I'm moving my hand down for the next strum because we're not actually strumming that third beat. So cut through the bone. So now if you can sing this instinctively and you're still watching, um, I hope you can um, I hope you realize that you can pat yourself on the back for being able to do that because it, it is quite unusual, right? I mean, the strumming pattern goes one way, the vocals go a different way, right? So um, if you're struggling, really the best thing you could do, first and foremost, is to play that strumming pattern so much that it's so easy for you to do that you don't even have to think about it anymore. And then you can focus on the vocals because it's actually, you know, it should be necessary for you to it shouldn't be necessary for you to dissect every song to this level. We're just doing this as a learning process. So let's check out the next line. Make it hard. Make it. That's where the H goes from hard. So there's two from to leave you alone on the end after two and it just keeps going like this and if you slow the song down you can actually check um, this uh, this rhythm for the vocals for every line on your own it's a really cool thing to do and um, it shows you how it's all put together basically Let's check out the second verse. We'll play it very slowly to see where every word goes. that was uh, the third beat for every line for the first word and the end after four for the last one and like I said if you have those two um, in the right spot you're probably gonna be okay you know but just to be safe <laughs> let's go one level deeper 
you can actually sing the rhythm for these vocals so if you really want to be sure that you get this right or if you're really still struggling if you're still here still trying let's use a metronome we're gonna set a metronome to 60 beats and we're gonna sing along to the metronome and I'm actually gonna sing the rhythm not just the words yeah so here we go My sorry eyes, this becomes and three and and three and four and three and 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 three and four and so those are the first four lines um the first four lines in the song the first verse and that is probably the weirdest thing i've ever done on camera so <laughs> so let's move on um so you can go as far as that it's just like figuring out the rhythm of the vocals transcribing that for yourself to uh really understand it. Okay, let's go to the chorus. Baby, you're Baby, you're So far, we're starting at uh, line on the third beat, right? word of the line is on the first beat of the second bar with G. Now on the last line of the chorus we start to sing on the G. Pretty much the same thing, right? Um, if it's not working, slow it down, figure it out. You know, pay attention to how everything comes together. But honestly, I think at this point, this is probably way too much detail. I highly doubt anyone is still with me at this point. <laughs> if you're still here, leave a comment. You're, uh, you're a perfectionist and I really like your style.